right. <clears throat> All right, let's start that again. We are kicking off Monday morning edition of Bike Talk. And um, let's see, what do we want to talk about? Um, so I think the news today is this uh, profile with Sean Avery, the legendary ranger, um, hockey player, the New York Rangers, who uh, basically rides, rides in the bike lane and berates and basically picks fights aggressively with anybody blocking the bike lane. And it's really interesting when you watch his Instagram, he will pick fights with anybody. <laughs> he's not he's not drivers it's drivers but also you know a homeless guy uh another cyclist who's you know kind of above the line or doesn't get off his bike while he's in the crosswalk um things like that so it's pretty fascinating um and it got me thinking i wanted to talk a little bit about um how kind of how his views um, like sort of respond to some of the things that he was talking about. Um, so I can like recap some of what he said a little bit. Um, basically, he is like, he's like all enforcement, right? Um, in other words, he's coming along riding and just basically anybody that's blocking a bike lane is fair is a is an enemy it's a fair is a sworn enemy and so he will go after them um but what i think was notably missing from his sort of profile is he also yeah so as a side he kind of blamed says, you know, look, if you're, if you're doing anything illegal as a cyclist, if you're going through lights, if you're not wearing a helmet, you basically, you know, you kind of not deserve what happens, but you kind of should know better. And uh, it's not a good look. And, and he makes a really good point. He basically said, look, I always stop at red lights. I always sort of follow these rules, um, asterisk, asterisk, rules that were, you know, created for cars not obviously not for cyclists they're just retrofitted to fit cyclists like here by the way i'm riding in the bike lane look at this shit that's all over the bike lane it's just gravel this makes it dangerous so legally i'm obligated to ride in the bike lane i could be ticketed if i'm not which is ridiculous but then there's gravel in it making it actually dangerous so i wonder how the sean avery position potentially changes as a result when uh, infrastructure doesn't allow you to operate in a safe way and that's something we'll get to um, I'm gonna turn here wait for the walk signal um, So, I forgot what I was saying, <laughs> my point that I was going to make. But all this gravel and shit in the bike lane uh, makes it hard to focus, not going to lie. Um, so, his perspective, uh, yeah, one of the things that he said that I, I think I, I do, I, I appreciate, is that he's basically like, look, how do I get, how do I earn, you know, um, what did he, how did he phrase it, uh, earn the trust or have credibility? How does he have credibility as somebody who's like a bike lane warrior when if he doesn't even follow the rules? So he said, look, I always, the last thing I want is to be captured on camera, you know, blown through a red light on my bike because it makes me a hypocrite and I don't want to be that. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's a really good point um, because while I may object to all this infrastructure, I mean, in my mind, I'm sort of going the path of civil disobedience a little bit, right? Like I break 
little rules. Like, I mean, look at this. There's no safe way around this thing. They didn't create a bike lane workaround. So now I'm, le I'm like illegally going around the bike lane or whatever. But they are illegally not setting up a bike, a safe bike detour. And so I think the issue is that as a cyclist, you're regularly confronted with these illegalities, these situations where um, something should be done in that moment, but it's not, right? What are you gonna do? And so in his view, he is the enforcer, you know? And he can do that. Um, I mean, look, he's a, he has a history of, of uh, sort of, you know, being aggressive and picking fights and, play, you know, and he's an athletic guy and he's not gonna stand down and that's how he is. So, it's amazing. I wanna, I, I'm gonna invite him and hopefully maybe ride with him one day, do a little interview chatted up with him uh, on you know on a commute or something maybe down where he is um, but but like not most of us are not like that you know I'm torn because enforcement means here's the thing his his other main point is that it's all about enforcement that police should be much more heavily enforcing bike lanes what he meant by, you know, is to clear the bike lanes, right? Ticket people who are in them, come through, whatever. Give a warning, don't block them yourself. If you're a cop and you're eating lunch in Starbucks, he mentioned, you know, and you're sitting in the bike lane, that's dangerous for everybody else using the lane. And those are, you know, those are, um, those are the kind of points that we always want to, uh, to like underscore is that this is a major mode of transportation for a, you know, a very large group of people, half a million people a day, ride bikes in New York City. We just hit 90,000 rides in a single day on city bike, just on city bike. I only see that, you know, that's only like 10% of what I see or 20%, right? So half a million is probably low as a daily average of, of cycling, which is crazy. It's a huge, huge number. And so his point is, is obviously really, really important. Um, but I'd say you have both sides. You have enforcement and infrastructure. Enforcement means it's too late. Typically what that means is it's already somebody speeding and then they get a ticket. It's already somebody in the bike lane. They've already made it unsafe for 50 people who were biking and came across this vehicle parked in the bike lane. They have to go around and the 51st person who does that might get killed by no fault of their own. It does not matter if they're wearing a helmet or not. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter if it's dark. All that's bullshit. All that matters is one single driver can inflict massive inefficiencies and, you know, and, and uh, safe, sorry, safety, uh, have massive safety implications on dozens and dozens, maybe even hundreds of cyclists. I mean, imagine if like, if like, there was like a third rail, you know, just a, a live wire just sitting in the subway entrance and everybody just walked past it. And like, everybody kind of knows, okay, like I could safely walk past it, but occasionally you come a little too close and, it, and sometimes it's just too much foot traffic and like somebody hits the live wire and dies. You know, and you're like, well, you know, I mean, I guess we'll just fix that, that uh, issue and like people should know better and they should wear a helmet, you know? Um, I don't know. Anyway, my main point <laughs> is that enforcement is only half the problem. It's an after the fact problem. And the best cities and the best policy is the infrastructure one. And I'm, I'm like, this is the thing that, that, they, that I think he's missing in the profile. This is the big piece is that he's sort of making it a personal, um, like personal behavior issue personal for cyclists who should be following all these rules, personal for um, drivers who should park on the other side when they can. You know what I mean? He literally points out like when they can't park on the other side, he won't even engage because he's like, well, it makes me look like an asshole to force them. And that's, he's the most aggressive kind of person to enforce drivers in bike lanes. And even he'll turn an eye, like a blind eye, when he feels like, oh, well, there's no other option here. And what that screams to me is that he just needs to, a lot of people need to learn a lot more about infrastructure and the role that infrastructure has to play on safe 
biking, safe walking, pedestrian areas, everything. And that what we are seeing here is not like, here's just, um, you know, God came down, created these lanes, and then there you go. We'll never change them again. And let's just enforce what we have. And, um, and that's, that should keep you all safe. Like, no, this is a work in progress. We're always changing this stuff. Um, and it's, and we should be moving more aggressively. I think the thing that he's missing is to make that argument. Um, I mean, you can't really do it. It does not lend itself to good Instagram stories. I get that. He's sort of picking fights. And to be totally fair, that's the same role that Reported plays, my app. You know, I built an app to make it easy to literally to file complaints, 301 complaints of taxis, but also regular cars blocking bike lanes. Literally what he's doing, except you're doing it in just a passive way and you're using formal channels, but it's the same, same idea. And, um, and so like, I'm, I'm sort of, uh, part of the, that sort of problem too. I'm leaning way too heavily on the enforcement side when really um, we should all be playing a role in the in infrastructure, you know, pushing infrastructure side, showing up at the community board meetings or, you know, or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. Signing signature, you know, signing campaigns, leading campaigns, uh, demonstrating. He called the die-in sort of a waste of time and called a lot of these cyclists who are there like whiny, you know, just sort of whining babies uh, because they want sort of safe streets. But that's the, that's the issue. They don't, yeah, like table stakes is follow the rules that are kind of already in existence, but we don't want to just have like the existing infrastructure um, just like cleared. We want real, we want more infrastructure. Like there are so many streets that are unsafe as they are today. They don't even have bike lanes to block. So he can't even, he wouldn't even have anything to do. He'd just be yelling at cars driving fast on a highway-like road that he has to share um, because he's on a bike, you know, and, and there's no place else to go. And so, like, that role for, of advocacy is sort of lost when all he's, you know, I mean, when all he's doing is, is going after bike lane blockers. And obviously, like, where there are bike lanes, there's a ton. Mostly they're painted. That's where they get blocked. That's basically not infrastructure. And I feel like we bark a lot, and I'm part of this. I do this a ton. This is all I do. <laughs> I just complain about, about uh, cars in the bike lane and all that. But we all do, and we sort of moan and groan. But the real, like, the real goal should be to push for really strong infrastructure. And what I mean by that is separated bike paths, things like this, which you're seeing right, right now, which is so rare in New York to have a dedicated path that actually is useful for cyclists and for runners and for pedestrians and for people in wheelchairs and for anybody. Um, like this guy. Like this guy up here. You know, anybody. Anybody can use this. You don't need a car in order to use it. That's, that, that's why it's so valuable. Um, so I don't know, that's my, that's my main point on that. I wish uh, in the interview he sort of also invoked the need for policy change. And, uh, you know, and, and de Blasio's role in this and the city council's role in this and maybe the community boards. Because he's kind of spending a lot of time in many different neighborhoods, but I think by the looks of his Instagram, you know, it's a lot of it's downtown and in uh, wherever, like, you know, different areas that have pretty decent bike lanes to begin with. And I know that, you know, the big fight is like, this five boroughs. And there's like, I mean, Harlem. Harlem's a good example of a place with zero, virtually zero, protected bike lanes. There's no protected bike lanes. There's one on like First Avenue in East Harlem. But it's really just part of kind of the First Avenue bike lane. It's not like a Harlem thing. And there's, I also can say, like none of the city bike docks are on the street, meaning they are not taking up any parking spaces. That's, that's by design. That's because the community board decided that parking is more important for, you know, people coming in from Pennsylvania and like Maryland, uh, who I see parked in these spots for, you know, weeks at a time, who uh, probably maybe live there, maybe don't, 
whatever. They're barely moving their cars. They're just moving them for alternate side parking. Meanwhile, these docks are like inc incredibly utilized. And we have community boards up there that just value those three parking spaces over having a really safe and visible place for a uh, city bike to dock. But you don't see that like downtown, there's more better placement of, of the city bike rock, racks. Anyway, so that's my, that's my uh, little rant about that. Um, I think, I think uh, it'd be great to see a sort of, um, you know, track back to like Sean Avery and a couple of the other bike uh, advocates who um, are comfortable confronting drivers <laughs> um, on camera. Uh, that's the, you know, you, there's a YouTube channel in Russia called uh, um, Don't Be a Douchebag. Um, or stop a douchebag. I totally, I'm blanking on it now. Oh, I feel terrible. Um, I love this channel. I've watched tons of it. And it's basically like 10 guys or, and women too, um, who have, I don't know, three or four cameras between them. They're filming this and they basically confront any driver who's driving on the sidewalk or doing anything. They, they literally just use their hands and they're like, stop, you're not allowed to be here. They are very, uh, um, very they're very calm initially. They're mostly common most most of the time. The drivers who, who typically escalate in these situations, and this is like Russia, right? You have, I, I don't know, I can't imagine how risky that is. Like they had one video where somebody had, you know, a gun. You don't know how connected these people are to like, um, to like politics and stuff. It could have these people thrown in jail. I don't know, but the cops seem, when the cops are called out, they are aware of, of, uh, of these you know these advocates right this, this this group the drivers often know too they're like oh you're that you're from the show okay okay and then they back off and i feel like we need something like that in new york to play sort of a role obviously you can't replace real infrastructure you can't replace real like enforcement but the entertainment factor is i think like very instructive right i have I had this idea like a Billy Eichner style show where you just roll up to people on the bike lane and you're like, I'll give you $10 if you can tell me, you know, the law that says you can or, you know, that, that uh, uh, determines whether or not you can park in a bike lane, for example. Um, you know, I'll give you 10 bucks for that, I'll give you 20 bucks. See if even cops can know which laws they are. Um, you know, and use it like as an educational, like tongue in cheek moment because the reality is when you just confront people and yell at them, um, you know, they're gonna get immediately defensive, digging heels, that's a New Yorker thing to do. I've done it, I don't know, as a cyclist, I, I, as a cyclist in the wrong, I've done it, which is crazy, which clearly means none of us are infallible. Um, and but i think like a a uh like a show um could be really valuable and really fun particularly like one of the things that's interesting here is the cycling community is not that big um i mean it is there's you know when you say like half a million people okay that's, uh, that's a lot but the people who are regularly coming to uh various like advocacy type events i mean it's it's really it numbers in the hundreds maybe a thousand two thousand right so like they tend to be people that you can recognize if you saw if you, you probably follow a lot of the people if you're active on instagram or twitter you probably follow a lot of the people who you're just riding i noticed that you know on friday uh molly struck up a conversation with me we chatted it turns out i already followed her on instagram i don't know how I started following her, but I, I'm pretty liberal with my Instagram following. But anybody who talks about bikes or mentions bikes in New York, like, I kind of want to see it. I kind of want to follow. Uh, I find that stuff interesting. Um, I made a list of sort of topics to discuss 
Um, let's see. I'm taking my phone here. Oh, that's bad, but. All right, let's see. When, ah, when one car blocks. Okay. So one of the thoughts I had was just, just uh, to penalize, the, okay, so, so if you block a bike lane, I think, I don't even know, I mean, the tickets are so rare, but when you do get a ticket, I think it's, I don't know, 100 bucks or 200 bucks. Um, something like that. It's like a non-moving traffic, whatever, whatever, violation, it's like a parking ticket. Um, what's crazy is a speeding ticket is only 50 bucks from a camera. That's if you're going 11 miles above the speed limit, so 36 miles an hour or faster, near a school zone while the camera is active, which means that school is basically in session or you are actually gonna, you know, it's not 3 a.m. when nobody's around, right? So you can't argue, oh, well, you know, nobody's around, so, you know, you're just money grabbing. No, this is literally like, it's only $50 to do that. And I don't know if, it, if it's tied to your speed. So it's $50 to go 60 miles an hour past the school in a 20 mile an hour, 25 mile an hour zone if you get caught on camera, right? But if a cop writes you a ticket, it's $100, $200, whatever it is, um, if you're blocking the bike lane. Now what I think is interesting is, I think there is a country, I think in, I can't remember where, it's a European country where they, they uh they will charge you based on how much money you have i think that's the ticket is oh boy the ticket is like proportional to your income and that's why there was like a guy who had like a two hundred thousand dollar ticket because he just had a ton of money and he was going like 100 miles an hour but i think we should do something similar not based on income but based on um the number of people who have to ride their bike around you and I really like this, at least we should measure this. And so think about it. Take an example of just somebody blocking a bike lane, right? So taken by itself, you might think, oh, they're not really hurting anybody. It's just for a minute. You know, you, you take the de Blasio stop argument. Uh, they're not, you know, they're just there. They're just, they're just getting their coffee. You know, leave them alone. Just go around, right? Now, if you flip that and you say, okay, how many people on bikes had to go around? Like, so you flip the whole equation and consider what their impact actually was on real human beings who actually needed to use that lane. And I think you get into much more interesting, much more interesting dynamic because then the argument goes from, oh, you're just like sort of, you're just like a bike patrol guy, like trying to write tickets of people who are doing this thing, but they're not really hurting anyone. And you can flip it and you could say, well, somebody who's, maybe blocking a lane in the middle of the night, you know, uh, you know, in the outskirts or wherever where nobody's really biking. Yeah, like maybe they shouldn't, maybe it doesn't really matter that much. Like why bother there? But if you got somebody in the middle of like rush hour parking on 6th Avenue in the green on the bike lane where within a two minute period, you might have, a, you know, 50 or 100 cyclists um, who have to then go around you should get basically like a ticket, almost like a ding point for every person who you, uh, whose safety you put in jeopardy. I don't want to call in, I want to say inconvenience. This is far beyond inconvenience, right? Every time it's a, it's a uh, every time a cyclist has to go around a car blocking the bike lane, it's not an inconvenience. Um, it is if you're in a car. If you're in a car, somebody's blocking, you just you go around. Oh yeah, go around. No big deal, because you're encased in 3,000 pounds of metal and airbags and everything else. When you are on a bike, it's very different. You demand a very different kind of set of rules and set of attention and set of, uh, and, uh, infra you know, and, and design for infrastructure and like behavior. Um, so that's, again, you'd avoid all this if you just didn't mix uh, these massively disparate speeds and vulnerabilities where you have cars on highways and separate roads and then cyclists on bike lanes, bike paths that are totally protected and separated. You didn't really have these issues. Um, but I wonder what the numbers 
would bear out. Um, and it would kind of attenuate the arguments um, that, that, uh, that uh, automated enforcement is maybe a, like a money grab or something because you're like, you can just point to the data and say, no, no, this actually, there were actually 12 cyclists. Look, there was like a parent. There was, you know, three people coming home from work. There were two kids. There was, you know, whoever. These are humans. They're all impacted. There were 12 of them. Uh, so you owe, you know, $20 per violation. And then you might say, okay, well, you know, maybe I have to minimize the amount of time that I'm there. If I'm gonna break the rule, then that's bad, but I don't know. I'll kind of change the calculus a little bit. Um, I'm a big fan of never blocking the lane. Um, I also think that there's another element, which is like, when you see one car, you see like a bunch, right? This is very common. Um, there's on the bike lane, the Instagram account, and those you often see in these, wow, that's loud. in certain areas where you have like, it's like one car and then it's followed by like 30 other cars and they're all blocking. And even when they're caught on camera a little bit, some of the camera stuff is like, I mean, when the driver gets confronted, you're like, hey, you're blocking the bike lane. And they're like, they point to all the other drivers. And they're like, well, look at everybody else. So I'm not really blocking it because like somebody in front of me is also blocking it. Or someone behind me is also blocking it. So like, how can I be blocking it? Since they are correct when they say like, as a cyclist, you're not gonna ride for like eight feet, you know, in between two cars that are blocking the bike lane. You're gonna have to just take the whole road and go around the entire section of cars. And that is like, to me, that's like, you should get double the penalty for that. Because one, um, you should never, you should never, that's like, oh, I'm speeding because everybody else is speeding. Like, okay, uh, that's not really um, a, an argument. It's not an excuse. But, um, but that's why it's so problematic for just one person to block the lane. Just one person sets the tone for the entire street, right? And so it, it, it tells the drivers coming up behind a new driver, you know, it's constant traffic, right? You have millions of cars entering New York City every day. Millions. And many of them are new to, new to New York City. They don't even know what's going on. Or they don't care. Or they, you know, they're Jersey drivers and they're coming in and they're gonna do whatever they want and whatever. And they're, uh, uh, what's it called, a PBA or something, or, uh, you know, at least Benevolent Association. They're friends of the cop, they have a little blue stripe or something. So they're gonna get out of a ticket. And, and so these people, um, I think when they come down a road or a street with somebody blocking one of these lanes, they, it basically tells them it's okay to park on the bike lane here. I'm doing it. See, there's somebody else. And so if there's somebody else, then we are a team. I'm not gonna get caught. Uh, clearly they're not getting ticketed. There's no cops around. Uh, it looks like it's fine. Like this is, and actually, and to be fair, like if I were driving and I were new to the city and I didn't really know the rules, which I think most people literally don't even know the rules, they do see the bike lanes as temporary parking spots. Cool, I have a little bell. I think Dinky heard me in his cocoon of silence in his car. That's why Bill's, as a side note, uh, Bell should be uh, 140 decibel horn. That's what the city bike should have. It's awful. I do not like this, but I think if you're riding with cars, you should be honking at them just like they can honk at, a, at other cars. How else are they going to hear you when you desperately need drivers to hear you? So anyway, that's my big problem with one, no, it's just one driver. Oh my God, and here's a, look at this car. Driving in the bike lane. JHC4572. Go that way, man. Get out there, or go that way. You work here, shut up. It's illegal. <laughs> you work here. I work here, shut up, was literally the first thing he said to me. I work here, shut up. Um, that's like, I'm a good guy with a gun. <laughs> I'm here to save you. How the fuck do I know 
who you are. I still don't trust you. You're in a car on a greenway that is barricaded because two years ago, a terrorist killed like eight people. I work here. Then if you work here, get the fuck out to the highway and drive the fuck around, which is how you should be driving. Don't use a bike path where 100,000 people ride every morning as your own personal shortcut. Anyway, that would have been a fun, a fun Sean Avery bit. You'll notice I didn't even say anything to him. I mean, I said something afterwards, but I, I just like literally looked at him noted his license plate and just pointed like which way are you going because I don't know that was all I did so obviously you don't really want to engage with a lot of these drivers that's why I don't I don't you know I, I have too much at risk I don't want to engage I don't want to get in a fight and certainly if they're behind the wheel of a car they might as well have a gun they literally basically are holding uh, they're open carrying with a loaded gun. Maybe not an AR-15, but holy shit, if you, if you can see the damage that this guy's saying, stop, this idiot, dude, stop. <laughs> so that driver's not even listening to the guy with a stop sign and a uh, fluorescent vest. And that guy's driving through. And this is, I think, where cyclists get so frustrated because even in these protected areas, even in the most protected places, you're still not uh, actually protected, right? And that's why, like, when Sean Avery says, oh, well, you know, cyclists are the ones who, they break way more. I don't see drivers breaking as many rules as cyclist meanwhile like it's funny because his, his whole shtick is drivers who are blocking bike lanes like literally they're all that's all he's seeing all day so they are breaking those rules and like it's not us versus them like it's not i don't know it's like saying oh well cyclists do it too or even worse like even if they did it's not like i don't see how that's relevant Again, it doesn't get you out of the ticket by saying, well, other people were speeding. Other people were doing it too. Like that's what, uh, you know, my son would do in second grade or first grade, you know? That's what I used to do. It's like, well, uh, I, I don't, like I shouldn't get, I shouldn't go to the, the principal's office. Cause, uh, Cause Jimmy and Billy were doing it too. They were hitting. It's like, no, you're all at fault. And you got caught. And if your argument is, well, we should all be penalized, sure, all of you should be penalized. Do it through automated enforcement. Here's a taxi, I'm loading. This is not a loading zone. Here's a Vermont license plate. Let's see if Vermont... Uh, no, it doesn't have anything. It's just a big truck. This guy, I think, yeah. There's the FDNY placard abuse, and then this AFA protective whatever is just blocking this bike lane. So you can see like, this is not a very fun place to ride, this block. So that's your introduction to like cross town bike lanes when you're coming off the greenway. It's like, oh, take 26 to cross town bike lane, great. Okay, just kidding, just kidding. It's a slalom and you have to, you have to like uh, avoid trees and shit along the way. Hey guys. Hey guys. Sorry. I don't know how nicely I can say, please kind of step out of the bike lane without being confrontational. It's tough. It's like, it's kind of like if you're riding a cab and you're like, hey, could you just turn down the music or turn off the music? I don't want to hear this. You know, and on, on, a, on some level you are confront, you have to confront people. And I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like confronting people. I like being nice to people. Um, I like ranting and you know complaining, um, 
but generally I think people are good people. So uh, it's the same kind of same thing we try to invoke with uh, our kids is that they're not, they're no good or bad people generally. They just make good or bad decisions. It's the decisions they make that are good or bad, right? And so again, it's the war on cars, not the war on drivers. Because I don't, I don't just blanket say they're obviously like 95% of drivers are fine. 98%, who knows? I mean, there's trillions of drivers. So like everybody can get a license. Um, everyone and their mom has a license. So, um, so like the idea that like, if you just said the entire class of drivers, everybody, all the drivers in New York are, are bad. It's kind of like a, just a lame argument that's easily sort of dismissed because you're not really being specific. And it's not even true. It's not even remotely true. Same thing with guns. I don't want to dive into a guns debate, but like there's 300 million guns or whatever it is. Imagine if even, you know, a, a meaningful percent of those people were not like, were, were dangerous with guns. Like the crazy thing is it only takes 0.00001% of gun owners to inflict almost all the damage, right? And so when, when you kind of look at that, you're like, well, the majority of drivers are fine. The vast majority are totally fine. They do everything, they do things right most of the time, and that's fine. Same thing for the cyclist. You can't just say, oh, well, everybody, all the cyclists uh, do crazy stuff or whatever. It's a dumb argument, it's pointless. You know? Um, So I think that's all the time I got. Let's see, not bad, all right. Well, thanks for listening and watching. Uh, maybe Sean, you'll, uh, you'll uh, check this out and um, hit me up, DM me on the, on the IG <laughs> or, the, or the tweets, Twitter, and um, let's, uh, let's, do, let's do a ride. Thank you. All right, like and subscribe. See ya.